everyone. Welcome to the Wasiga 4-H Center. I'm David Weber, the Center Director. We're going to go visit our program coordinator, Adam Rawls, and learn about the stream that runs through our facility. These mountain streams here in North Georgia are teeming with life and are very important to the ecosystem. It's right over there. Come on. Hey, everyone. I'm sitting on Ward's Creek, and we just caught a crayfish. Crayfish like this are macroinvertebrates and play an important role in the stream ecosystem by being part of the food web and indicating the health of the stream by their presence or absence. Something that was really unexpected to this crayfish is she's actually carrying eggs. So female crayfish can carry a couple hundred eggs at a time and they're going to carry these eggs for four to six weeks before they hatch out. And you may be asking yourself, what is a macroinvertebrate? Macroinvertebrates are animals that don't have a spine but can be seen without the aid of a microscope. And today we're going to be talking about the importance of macroinvertebrates and our stream ecosystem and seeing what macroinvertebrates we can catch on Ward's Creek. So I'm going to let her go so she can go about her day and we're going to see what else we can catch today. So today I'm going to be using a D-net to find some of our hidden friends in our aquatic world. This takes a lot of time and patience, but it's totally worth it to see what is literally underneath my feet and all around me. So we're going to be checking out our littoral zone to see if we can find any more of our critters. Let's give them a little shake, kick it on up, kick it on up, and then give a nice big scoop to see what we can find. Now, we have to use our hands to pull up our net and look around in it. Oh, I actually caught a little baby salamander. So you can see that one running around. We're just going to let that guy go. And also, we have other critters running around in here, too. Oh, we have a really big aquatic insect right here. And also, I think I just saw another one running around. Awesome. So we have a really cool stonefly, which this is a great indicator species. So I'm going to put these guys in our bucket and do a little bit more searching. And then we're going to take a step into our lab to take a closer look at them. So I'm going to put these guys in our bucket. Rinse out our net nice and good, and then go back to searching through our stream. So we just spent a little bit of time in our stream, and we caught some new aquatic friends. And we're going to be taking some close-up images of our new friends and helping you all identify them at home. Here we have a stonefly nymph that appears to be doing push-ups, but what it is actually doing is forcing water over its gills in order to get more dissolved oxygen in a low oxygen setting. We had another really cool find today, and that is a freshly molted stonefly nymph that will develop its color over time. Here we have a cluster of mayfly nymphs that we can identify by their three tails and fluffy gills. One of the voracious predators that you can find within the macroinvertebrate world are dragonfly nymphs. They use ambush or actively search for their prey. This wormy looking guy is a cranefly larvae and will develop into an adult form that looks like a giant mosquito, but is actually harmless. We just want to show off our crayfish that we have throughout our stream one more time because they are quite abundant. Just spent a little bit of time identifying the nymphs that we caught today. These nymphs are juvenile forms of their adult counterparts who play a very important role in our stream ecosystem. They provide a very valuable cleaning service by working as scavengers for decaying or dead plants, animals, and bacteria. They are also a very valuable food source for fish, amphibians, birds, and our reptiles. And we caught a lot of stoneflies today and mayflies, and they are highly sensitive to food. So their presence in our stream indicates that we have a healthy stream. So what we'd like for you to do today is to post on the video things that you do at home to help protect your local waterways. Also, our environmental education team prepared some very fun color sheets and worksheets for you all to do at home. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.